They say there are two things in life that are assured, death and taxes, and though some people will do everything they can to avoid the latter, getting around the former is a bit trickier. As gamers, we're somewhat used to beloved characters meeting shocking and oftentimes brutal ends, but despite all of our experience losing treasured protagonists and cherished NPCs, there are still some deaths that caught us right off guard. <laughs> God, is someone, someone chopping onions in here? For this list, we're trolling back through literally hundreds, if not thousands, of video game deaths to bring you a definitive record, at least in our writer's opinion, of the most upsetting character demises. Fair warning, a mahoosive spoiler alert is very much in effect from here on out. Oh, and you might also need that box of tissues. No, no, for crying into, Jesus Christ. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and these are the 10 most heartbreaking deaths in video game history. Number 10. The Joker, Batman Arkham City. Now here, boys and girls, we have what might be known in some circles as a wild card! Oh my gosh, getting that out of the way early today, aren't we? Because although we weren't hugely saddened by the expiry of the Joker and the finale of Arkham City, the death did leave us feeling somewhat hollow and empty on the inside. After consuming the Titan formula at the end of Arkham Asylum, the Joker has been left suffering from a potentially fatal illness, and unbeknownst to Batman, is deteriorating rapidly. You'll forgive us if we don't don't bother sending a get well soon card, though. When he infects Brucey Dubs with said disease, it's down to Mr. Freeze to save the day and create a cure, which he does, and Bats is saved. As Batman debates sharing the treatment, however, the Joker attacks him, causing the vial to fall to the ground and shatter, condemning Joker to his doom. As players, we're not left feeling upset that Joker has died, per se. After all, he's a public menace at best and an utter psychopath at worst, so he's no great loss to the world. But what we do feel is devastated on behalf of Batman, who admits that despite the Joker's dastardly ways, planned on giving him the antidote all along, leaving him to lament the unfortunate series of events that led to his foe's unintentional demise. Number 9. 2B – Nier Automata Even if you've played Nier Automata, or Nier Automata if you want to get different pronunciation about this, you might not even be aware that 2B doesn't make it through the whole thing. More avid fans of the game know full well that the story isn't over once the credits roll, but more casual players may see said titles and power off their consoles. Top tip, if you've done that, fire that PlayStation back up, young man, or, or woman, because you've missed about three quarters of the game. <laughs> Don't you worry, we'll wait. By the time we reach the game's third act, 2B has already survived the initial machine invasion, having gone through a mercy killing of her companion, self-destruction, and various other assorted inconveniences. You'd think the poor lass would be due a nice tea break, but no, she gets infected by a logic virus and has to be mercy killed by A2. The entire section of the game is truly tear-jerking, as 2B struggles ahead, realising she doesn't have much time left. It's also utterly devastating to see the events from 9S's point of view, as without context, he believes that A2 has betrayed and murdered 2B in cold blood. The the whole affair is deeply upsetting, and we can't help but somewhat envy those ignorant of the game's additional segments. I mean, they might have missed out on a lot, but at least they'll never have to know this pain. <laughs> Number 8. Sarah, The Last of Us it's unusual for a character about whom we know so little to have such an impact on us as players. But despite having spent only a few minutes of the game with young Sarah, we were still shocked and appalled when she was gunned down at the beginning of The Last of Us. As the country is ravaged by a mutant fungus, protagonist Joel attempts to get his daughter Sarah to safety, suspecting her leg to be broken. Joel pleads with a soldier to help them, but the latter is given orders to dispatch the pair and turns his gun on them, sending them tumbling down an embankment. All looks promising as Uncle Tommy swoops in to save the day, before Joel is forced to chow down on a lead salad. But as the camera pans to a whimpering Sarah, we are horrified to see that the poor girl has been shot. Throughout the superbly acted scene, we can only look on in horror as Joel attempts to comfort his dying daughter and dissolve into a pathetic sobbing mush as she slips away. 
way. It's rare that a video game even has the audacity to kill off a child, but Sarah's death gives the player an understanding of just how harsh this world is, and reminds them that in an apocalyptic situation, truly no one is safe. Number 7. Eli Vance, Half-Life 2, Episode 2 in hindsight, we really should have seen the death of Eli Vance coming from a mile off. Everyone is jubilant. Following the successful launch of the rocket, Eli spends a good amount of time letting Alex and Gordon know just how proud he is of them, and he tells Gordon that he has some more information for him, but he'll reveal that at another time. It couldn't have been more obvious if he had a big flashing, impending doom sign strapped to his forehead. It's arguably the happiness and celebration that comes immediately before Eli's untimely death that makes it all the more difficult to deal with. The entirety of the Half-Life series is full of death and destruction, but it's the fact that mere seconds prior to the death we were reveling in success, plus the fact that Eli's an all-round great dude who went down swinging, that makes this one all the harder to swallow. In Half-Life Alex, the eponymous heroine is given the opportunity to save her father, meaning that the gentle physicist technically lives to die another day day, but it does come at the cost of Alex's involvement with the G-Man, so you'll forgive us if we remain quite depressed about this one. Number 6. John Marston, Red Dead Redemption those unfamiliar with Rockstar's triumphant 2010 western adventure Red Dead Redemption could be forgiven for thinking that the whole thing is just a vapid shooty affair, and that everyone just has a nice time gunning down various outlaws and eating beans, etc. Those people would be horribly wrong, however. Set in 1911, the story follows former outlaw John Marston, as his family is kidnapped by unscrupulous Bureau of Investigation agents Edgar Ross and Archer Fordham, and he's forced to hunt down his old gang members in exchange for his wife and son's safe return. It would have been enough of a gut punch if Marston had simply failed in his task, but the game leads the players to believe that he succeeds. He gets his family back and is seemingly allowed to toddle off to his ranch to live out the rest of his days in peace. But in the ultimate act of betrayal, Ross attacks the ranch, gunning down John and his friend Uncle as his wife and son barely escape on horseback. Having followed John for the entire story, his death alone is heartrending enough, but it sets his son Jack on a path of revenge as he tracks Ross to a riverbank and guns him down in a duel, effectively resigning the poor lad to life as an outlaw. Won't someone please think of the children. Number 5. Chloe Price, Life is Strange. Do you know what's worse than seeing a beloved character die? Seeing a beloved character die on multiple occasions over the course of one game. Throughout Life is Strange, we play as Max Coldfield, a young photography student that finds she has the ability to rewind time. And as more and more mysterious goings on unfold, she and her best friend Chloe must find clues to try to unravel the truth. Sadly, Chloe is a bit of a klutz, and we find ourselves frequently having to intervene with the timeline in order to protect her from getting killed. In the majority of situations, the outcome is quickly reversible, but that doesn't make it any less unsettling. The most heartbreaking moments are the ones where we have to choose Chloe's death. The first occasion being an alternate timeline in which Chloe has been in a car accident that leaves her paralyzed from the neck down. Bedbound and living in increasing pain, Chloe begs Max to increase her morphine dose and allow her to die on her own terms. As if that hadn't left us bawling in the fetal position, at the game's climax we must choose whether to reset the timeline leading to Chloe's death, or allow a tornado to devastate the town, presumably killing everyone we know. Assuming you choose the former, it's devastating to lose a character that you fought so hard to keep alive, and all the more difficult knowing that ultimately, it's probably the right thing to do. Number 4. Morden Solus, Mass Effect 3 
You know that bit in Titanic where the ship's sinking and the band regroup and start playing again and we all break down in floods of tears? Well, that's basically what happens with Morden in Mass Effect 3, only it's far, far worse because we, the player, choose to let him die. In order to secure Solarian support, Morden gets to work creating a cure for the genophage, which must be distributed by the planet's atmosphere. Sadly, the construct capable of altering the atmosphere has been sabotaged, and the only way to ensure the distribution of the cure is for Morden to go up there himself and fix it at the cost of his own life. The player can choose to not disperse the cure, but if it comes down to the lives of a whole alien race versus that of a single scientist, well, it's a reasonably simple choice. What makes the scene all the more heart-wrenching is the willingness with which Morden sacrifices himself, quipping that it had to be him because someone else might have gotten it wrong. The final blow to our emotions comes as the Solarian completes his task, apprehensively singing Scientist Solarian to himself as the construct burns and ultimately explodes around him. We all giggled the first time we heard this song, but the last time we sobbed our little eyes out. Number 3. Aunt May, Marvel Spider-Man when we first picked up 2018's PS4 exclusive Spider-Man, we were expecting to have a rip-roaring time swinging around New York City, kicking some bad guy butts, and smooching Mary Jane in the downtime. What we didn't expect was to have our hearts ripped, still beating, from our chests, and torn into a million pieces come the game's finale. Is that too dramatic? N no, no it's not, it's not. After all-round scoundrel Dr. Octopus unleashes a lethal bioweapon Devil's Breath upon Times Square, it's up to our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man to secure the antidote and ensure its delivery into the right hands. Sadly, one of the unfortunate souls that falls victim to the attack is our own Aunt May, and by the time that Peter is able to get hold of the necessary cure, she's already at death's door, leaving him to choose between giving up the remedy to be synthesized into a vaccine, or saving his dying aunt, and let's face it, mother figure. We're not too big to admit that we were in floods of tears as Aunt May confessed that she'd known Spidey's identity the entire time and that she was incredibly proud of him, or as he battled with himself to choose the lives of many others over that of a loved one. We'd like to think that we too would make the heroic choice if put in his position, but we just hope we never have to. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some sobbing to be getting on with. Number 2. Lee Everett, Telltale's The Walking Dead when it comes to end-of-the-world scenarios, you'd think we'd be used to losing beloved characters to zombies, infections, and other unidentified nasties by now. But as it turns out, we are not used to it. We cry ever Tim. Those who had either watched the Walking Dead TV series or read the graphic novels that inspired it would be well aware going into Telltale's The Walking Dead that it wasn't going to be any sort of a picnic. The series has never been afraid to dispatch beloved characters, so why should the video game adaptation be any different? A spoiler alert, it wasn't any different in the slightest. During the episodic tale, protagonist Lee takes young Clementine under his wing. It's hard to do their relationship justice in as many words as make up a list entry, but suffice it to say that Lee effectively becomes a father to Clementine, protecting her from walkers, hostile survivors, and even a bunch of cannibals, which makes it all the more distressing when the poor bloke receives an unwelcome chomping near the end of the game. Succumbing to the infection, Lee is left with the choice of whether to ask Clementine to leave him to turn or to shoot him. Regardless of what the player chooses, it's a difficult watch as he he tries to comfort a distraught Clem with his dying breaths, and we can only look on through tears of our own as the pair part in the worst way imaginable. And number one, Aerith Gainsborough, Final Fantasy VII. Be honest, what else could possibly have taken the number one spot on this list besides the death of Aerith Gainsborough in 1997's Final Fantasy VII? Described by one publication as the death that taught gamers how to cry, the scene comes absolutely out of nowhere, leaving players staring open-mouthed at their screens, not quite knowing what to do with themselves. 
After realizing that Sephiroth's influence over Cloud may render him incapable of defeating the Masamune-wielding Torag, the fearless Aerith travels to the Forgotten City alone in an attempt to counter Meteor. When Cloud and company find her, praying on an altar, it seems that the group will be reunited to fight another day. Sadly though, utter tosspot Sephiroth is on hand to ruin everyone's day, first trying to get Cloud to kill Aerith, before descending from the rafters and doing the job himself. As Cloud held on to Aerith's lifeless body and descended into utter despair, we players couldn't help but feel the same. No matter who you are, it's almost impossible not to fall in love with Aerith as a character who ascends from simple flower girl to powerful magical being as you play through the game, so it's unsurprising that players felt the impact of her death long after the event and even after the credits had rolled. No, I'm not crying. You're crying. Stop crying!